Hello, everyone, and welcome to the SourceForge podcast. Thank you for joining us today. I'm your host, Bo Hamilton, senior editor and multimedia producer here at SourceForge, the world's most visited software comparison site where B2B software buyers compare and find business software solutions. We have a very exciting episode today with Arvind Partabon, CEO of SuperOps, who joins us to unpack how AI is reshaping the world of managed services. So SuperOps just kicked off what they're calling a first-of-its-kind agentic AI campaign. And I think it's pretty wild. Uh, they've got billboards in Times Square. They have a drone show at DEF CON. So um, really exciting to see what's coming down the pipeline. And I'm excited to, to talk about this initiative. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Um, let me introduce Arvind. Arvind, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Bill. I'm really excited and it's a honor. Absolutely. Um, first of all, I just want to say kudos to you and your your team for this insane marketing push. Um, I've been following you over on on LinkedIn, all your updates, and seeing the agent missing billboards and the the trucks all around the country. It's pretty neat, um, and it's just you know it's exciting to be kind of the next frontier, right, of AI and how it's evolving right before our very eyes. Yeah, thank you so much. But uh, let me just uh, take a moment to explain what we are trying to do here, right? Uh, so. Uh, I- there's been a lot of noise about agentic AI, like everybody, like every industry, every SaaS founder, every industry is talking about agentic AI. Uh, and uh, it's been a while. And what I have noticed is a lot of them are confusing what agentic AI is. Like uh, like old workflows are being renamed to agentic AI. It's just, just a simple thing of doing a, a manual work grunt work into uh, autonomous not it's not replacing or doing something really big meaningful so it's it been uh, everybody wants to ride the wave but we are not doing it right so that's why the campaign is about agent is missing let the real agent please stand up that that's the uh, idea behind it we want to bring some awareness as a community we need to learn w- uh, what to build or what is agent AI, how it's going to change our life so that's the whole uh, a campaign is about and a little bit a community movement with awareness is what we are trying to do. Right. That's a good distinction there because like I've seen a lot of and I've heard from a lot of companies talk about just the marketing side of things. They're capitalizing on like the buzzword of agentic AI, but it's really not real agentic AI. It's not real autonomous behavior. So I think it's neat to see that you're actually this is real autonomous like services being integrated into your systems, right? Exactly. And we have trying to um, commoditize it. So that's the uh, uh, beauty of it. Not just we as a vendor, we are trying to say, this is what uh, Agent AI means and uh, thrust it upon the users. We, we are welcoming users to help us build and uh, uh, collectively figure out this. Now, for you guys over at SuperOps, um, essentially the agents are installed on your client's devices and they work to establish sort of a deeper connection between uh, the admin and the endpoints in your client's network, right? Um, so it's, it's essentially designed to take like a, a proactive autonomous approach or action rather than just like passively respond to commands from the, from the engineer or whoever it might be. Right. Correct. So there are two kinds of, uh, agent AI we are trying to, again, we are trying to coin it. Everything is new. Like there are human assisted agent AI. There are independent autonomous agent AI. There can be small, I'll, I'll give you an example, right? Like a ticket dispatcher. So uh, in the past, we used to have uh, one of the technicians read through all the email t- tickets and then assign it to the right technician based on their expertise, based on location and things like that. Uh, now AI can do that. We have a feature which can have to automatically assign the ticket based on the expertise of the tech, past tickets and location and all uh, different criteria. But somewhere we need to also have human to make sure that it is doing well and it's not going to completely take it away from uh, human. It is human assisted. But the a real agent AI is where there is no human involved, where it can automatically uh, solve certain tickets, L1, deflect it, and take independent decisions. So that is the real agent AI. So there are two folds, and we have started uh, 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 building these first uh, agent AI where it is human assisted. It does 90% of the job, but somewhere we need to have a check before we completely give that uh, autonomy. Yeah, can you can you talk about it some more? So, what what are some of the specific examples where agentic AI has improved the you know things like the user experience, but also the business efficiency of your clients? Yeah, so let's take knowledge base for example, right? Like, so it, it requires a lot of uh, tickets, and 
properly documented solutions. So w- once you have all this in the knowledge base, if, if someone is asking for a question, if it is a repeated ticket, like a, pre- a ticket has, uh, it is this incident has happened again and again, the agent can actually scroll through all your tickets, your knowledge base and tell these are the things you need to try or it can automatically go and try it if it's uh, uh, integrated and then solve uh, L1 tickets. I'm saying this is something which human is not uh, involved. It can be a simple thing like, hey, uh, how can I update my virus scanner? And this is how it should be done. And you can figure it with a script and you can do it by insert. Uh, this is what is uh, uh, happening now. But to take smart decisions, it requires more and more data. We need to train it. Uh, so that's the phase we are working on. But right now, uh, there is some ad- ad- adoption. People are using this, but it is not replacing humans yet. Okay, it's not replacing humans yet, <laughs> but it's, you know, that it has the potential not, and I wouldn't even say replacing humans, it's just essentially freeing up, uh, you know, roles to do other things, right? Now, just like with any you know new technology, uh, it can take some time to get adopted for various reasons, There's a lot of factors involved, but uh, we need to educate people on kind of the use cases, the upsides of the technology, but also, um, especially with this AI, agentic AI um, technology, you need to reassure them that it's safe, right? Especially when you're dealing with yeah, automated systems that take action on, on a user's behalf. Um, how do you educate customers on trusting AI agents to take meaningful action autonomously? So this is a very interesting uh, uh, transformation, if you ask me about. So what we need to do is it's a collective thing. So community is the only answer. We are discussing this. We are meeting up with a lot of MSPs. We are doing a lot of educational uh, campaigns. Like, uh, as we speak, we had a cab meeting uh, yesterday in New York. We are talking to folks on how to adopt first uh, collectively, like it's community is the only answer, like we have to do it together. The awareness just not just comes from us as vendors, it's thought leaders, the MSPs who are users, the challenges they are facing. So this is like we need to do this together and uh, there's a lot of noise about it, but it's about being transparent and having the clarity of what we are doing, right? Like we can get carried away assuming a lot of things but it is very important to have a very very close feedback loop with the customers on what we are trying to solve end of the day it's everything boils down to how can we make it faster better and uh cheaper right like the, how can it how can the msp business be efficient so if it's solving that i think uh we have a win now we hear a lot about um you know various like chatbots kind of going going kind of rogue and 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 um not necessarily following uh the the prompt engineers you know direction um and obviously this is like a different technology than some of the agentic tools and services you have um but i'm curious like just what kind of like uh safeguards you have in place to make sure these these systems don't go like off the rails so to speak no it is it is very very important Uh, security is very important data is very very important especially like we are talking about working with multiple tools and whenever it comes to agent ek it's not just on supras it's going to integrate with multiple tools it's going to have access of a lot of uh uh tools and information right like well you know what if somebody can actually ask for a prompt and get for passwords right like these are things which is very very uh, important so the way we are uh, approaching it is we will only integrate and call the uh, applications we will not get the data it is going to follow all those uh data set of things like gdpr and data being within the us and security and governance is one of the biggest concern and we need to take care for some like kind of access we are providing the agent to actually pull right like it should not be the data should not be stored it only should be able to access and call and not completely take the data right like that's how we are trying to build we are reviewing every code which is being uh uh, built and then only upgrading. Like think of it like an app store, uh, Apple app store. We are running a tight ship on uh, data and privacy. That's yeah, that's that's good. Um, I imagine, like I imagine, that's one of the biggest hesitations you kind of hear about. Is it the security privacy aspect? Yes, it is not just for our industry. I think AI uh, governance is the biggest concern for everyone here. It is uh, in which we need to. Uh, fix and learn as we grow like it is not something we know right now and we uh, we should be very very cautious on what kind of access we provide well um i want to talk about the marketplace you you, you mentioned um so i know super ops has a, a marketplace with integrations already you can plug into the the super ops platform um but there's as far as i know there's no dedicated ai agent marketplace just yet if your platform could offer ai agents via a a marketplace what kind of agents do you think would your users be most interesting and uh, are interested in and willing to try out 
Yeah, so we do have a marketplace already and we also integrate with Paxate where we uh, provide access to all the applications in the industry. Uh, I think there is no choice. Like moving forward, uh, agents are the future and uh, like how we are integrating with a lot of apps. Agents are similar to that. We are going to allow uh, agents to be uh, uh, used from our marketplace. It's not just apps which is going to be built on top of super apps. It can be independent apps like a marketing app or like how to get a Google review for your website. It can be apps which can be used on top of our third party vendors, even competitors. So we're going to allow this because it uh, it has opened up a new uh, a ball game altogether, right? Like it, uh, agents is not going to restrict you to only your platform. It's going to help in multifolds uh, uh, and we are going to allow any app which is helping MSPs to make their business better. Awesome. So, okay, just to clarify, you had, so you do have a, a agentic AI marketplace Not already? Yet. Not, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. We have a- okay. agentic AI apps, uh, agentic AI uh, bots on top of Superops right now. We have not uh, launched any marketplace yet. Because, yeah, we've had, um, we've talked about AI um, Monica in, uh, with super ops um, in a previous episode um, so it's you're, so it's, it's being built out I guess no uh, Monica AI is like our AI engine it's like Watson uh, of IBM uh, it's not just as a, an agent AI it does a lot of things like summarizing tickets so it's like it's like Jarvis you talk to it it helps it's like a co-pilot it helps technicians admins users to do things better you can, you can just ask a uh, uh, Monica saying that summarize this ticket for me and it's going to give you information like you want a report about your client it's going to give you the information instead of you clicking and searching you just talk to Monica and it's going to help it's like Jarvis for MSPs gotcha okay well it's exciting to see to to talk about this potential this marketplace that's coming um, and obviously there's some real use cases and, and kind of efficiency gains too with the, the integrations um, so I'm excited to see what you guys come up with in the future um, and I think the, you know, one of the things you mentioned was like the, the automated uh, support ticketing um, agent. Um, I think that that's, that would be super useful to kind of continue to see it built out um, because that's such a core component for MSPs, right? Um, and again, it kind of goes back to just having to really get that education out there about how reliable it is and how you can trust it um, before it totally frees up like a, an engineer's tasks to do other things, right? Um, can you, could, again, just kind of talk about some of the uh, importance of transparency, things like data control and agent accountability uh, in this marketplace-driven world you're, you're ushering us into? So uh, think about this uh, in a different industry, right? Like, let's take uh, Cursor, for example. What did Cursor do to uh, engineers? It's not actually replacing engineers. It's only making an engineer's life much better. A smarter engineer will be able to code much faster. Things which took three months to develop and uh, launch, a smart engineer will do it in like less than two days now, right? It's only made a smart engineer much smarter, right? Like that's exactly how I would put uh, agent AI in MSP world. An MSP who can actually use AI can be much more productive and efficient. Uh, you don't need so many people to do uh, so much. You, you can do it with a leaner team. And instead of hiring more people, you can uh, deploy agents and you can actually get things done uh, and be much more productive and efficient and profitable. So this is this is the crux of it. So the way we need to uh, bring in AI uh, into it is to start with where am I spending my time? Where is my uh, most of our uh, uh, repeated activities are where? And things are like very uh, documented. It's grant, I have to do it. Can mission do it better? Like agents do it better, right? Like these are the things which, uh, where we will start, where it will it'll have limited access. The agent will only go and do the things uh, again and again and again, like resetting passwords or things like that. But uh, still human uh, uh, run MSP like the, the word I use now, I think it's catching up in a lot of our community is MSPs won't replace, uh, AI won't replace MSPs. Uh, MSPs with AI will replace those who don't. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. If you're not, if you're not taking advantage of these tools, you're just going to be left in the dust. Yeah, I keep telling this with all my friends who aren't using any sort of AI right now, um, in whatever you know facet of life they're, they're or use case. I'm like, you got to be using it in some way. I think you're just because other people are, and um, you're just going to be kind of left behind. Yeah. No, that's the awareness we have. If you see, we actually posted. 
billboards everywhere uh, in Tampa, in Miami, in uh, Santa Clara, in New York. Like we are trying to say that the real agent is missing. So just to uh, reinforcing that we need to be a little bit more uh, 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 educated about it, we'll, uh, not jump the gun and try to rush to market with half-baked agents. Uh, so we wanted to make a point, prove, take a stance for the community with this campaign. Yeah, yeah, I think a, ca- a cautious approach is definitely wise. Um, um, as is, you know, just the yeah, the marketing push to to educate users on sort of the real meaningful use cases, um, and then reassuring the the data control aspect. Right, you have, um, you know, you have. I imagine you have logs of the actions that are conducted, which you can audit, and then maybe even like there's there could be things like a suggest only mode where agents can only make suggestions before they're rolled out. You know, things like that. I imagine are are probably pretty. Uh, pretty useful. <laughs> now, looking at the at the big picture, what do you think will drive long-term success in in an open AI agent marketplace? Is it uh, monetization? Is it the community? Or is it something else? Well, initially, I think uh, uh, the first success would be to adopt AI. Like, there has been a lot of window shopping. Folks are curious, but also scared. Uh, so, uh, adoption would be the first step and awareness with community. Like, we need to be very aware on what we are getting into, what to be built, uh, how is it going to help us. Uh, as a community, nobody, uh, to be honest, nobody knows the answer. Like nobody knows how this is going to change the industry. Uh, every single day, the AI uh, evolution is happening so fast, right? We as a community should have a place where we need to discuss, decide how to transform, how to use AI. And my answer would be community-driven AI adoption would be the future. Yeah, I think uh, just, again, just kind of educating uh, the users and, and the, the populace and being like, uh, showing them what you can do with it, I think is just a huge step because uh, I think a lot of times you get, it's almost like you have these features rolled out before users are even asking for them in a sense. But once they once they start using them and, and start playing with them, they're like, oh, this has completely changed how I, I work and operate. So yeah, I think that's that's very true. Correct. And also the industry is so little... Uh, fragmented. When I say fragmented, uh, we are used to do certain things 30, 40 years. Like we're, we're talking about an age old industry. It's been there for almost 40 years now. And uh, change is not an easy thing. There is a human element involved where uh, we getting used to the new way of doing things is something which will take time. Well, you know, again, cautious rollout. And I think, um, you know, I think you guys are on the right path and you have a good, you know, kind of uh, timeline with how you're, you're approaching this. Um, and I, again, I'm just excited to see what's coming and I'm even kind of more bullish on agentic AI after this conversation. So thank you for that. <laughs> now, for those interested in learning more about this campaign um, to get or maybe they want to get in touch with you and your team, uh, where should they go or should you send them? No, it's uh, superops.com slash agent. Uh, uh, we have all the details for lucky few uh, folks. We are going to uh, take them to Vegas for the huge unveil of this uh, campaign. On August 8th, so we just launched a teaser and on uh, wait up for DEF CON on uh, August 8th and uh, join this uh, initiative and you might be lucky to get to Vegas and watch this in live. Awesome. All right, superops.com slash agent. Um, thank you, Arvin. It's been a pleasure. Let's have you back one of these days too to just get some updates on, on everything we talked about. Absolutely. Anytime, maybe I'll be there. <laughs> Sounds good. All right, that's Arvin Parthavan, CEO of SuperOps. Thank you all for listening to the SourceForge podcast. I'm your host, Bo Hamilton. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all of our upcoming B2B software-related podcasts. I will talk to you in the next one.